Hello my friends, William Poloniak here again at Old Health Foundation. Today I'm making a very simple juice. For my greens I'm using collard greens, about 20 leaves and carrots and a few other ingredients. Let's look at my other ingredients. In addition to carrots and collard greens I have 110 grams of ginger, 140 grams of turmeric and one whole garlic head. And I'm going to do my greens first, so let's take a look at the next step. Now the first thing I want to point out is that I'm using the front loading feed tube. This is the most advanced design feed tube on the market. I'm also using the near zero blowback cutter that has over 80 teeth cut into the cutter and that enables you to shred produce 4 degrees centigrade cooler. So the first thing I will do is install the cutter and then I'm going to plug in the thermometer. The first thing I'm going to do is feed in three or four ice cubes to cool down the cutter and the feed tube because I want to keep my temperature below 20 degrees centigrade. So let's put the ice through. And my next step is to feed one or two leaves at a time and because these leaves are so large, I'll roll them into the tube and feed them in. Collard greens first. Now you can see how efficiently that cutter works, just like a hot knife through butter. Let's put the stem in first this time. More ginger. Now here's the last of my collar. are narrow enough you can get two or three in at a time. We're over 20 again so a couple more ice cubes. Normally you don't need ice cubes when you do carrots. Now here's the last of my carrots. Now, one feature I love about this front-loading feed tube. First of all, you're not pushing from the top, and if you have an offset, you're not pushing from the right, which is bad for your spine. You're pushing from the front, and usually with both hands is best. But I see in here, it's probably already shred, but it's a good idea to put a clump of pulp in here. And if even if you can't see a plug of carrot not shred, this will make sure that it's all done properly. So go we'll catch your ball. And my next step is going to be to clean the feed tube, mix the produce, and press some juice. So let's do that now. We'll take the grid holder out, clean the grid on both sides. Not much fiber in carrots, but clean it anyway. And then clean the feed tube. Unplug the thermometer, remove the feed tube, not much on the cutter, but let's make sure we get everything off, and then clean out the feed tube from both sides. We want to get all the pulp out. Now every juicer sold by Home Health Foundation comes with this cleaning brush, and it's ideal for cleaning the feed tube, And the cutter and the front of the juicer. With a wet cleaning brush, clean the round escutcheon on the front of the juicer. And a damp sponge, or if you have a spray nozzle like I do, spray it down. I'm going to reassemble. 
with the clean feed tube. I'm going to put the grid holder and the grid back in the juicer and the cutter is never and I mean never left on the motor shaft with the hole down put it in top so it has good drainage and now we'll mix the produce. And it's a good idea to rotate your bowl in both directions because you get a better mix that way rather than going only one direction. Now when you take your claws out of the freezer it's a good idea to crack the ice on the corner of your counter just to make them easier to separate. And we'll take them out of the plastic bag and separate them into six claws. I use my six cloth less work method which I'm going to demonstrate in a moment. Now we'll start pressing juice. So take your six claws, put them in the tray, pull the tray over so the claws don't touch the countertop and leave some space up here for the folded claws. And we're going to start by putting three scoops into each cloth. That's approximately a cup to a cup and a half of pulp. And I'm going to press two cloths full of pulp at one time because you get better pressure that way. And later I'm going to show you how you get 10% more juice using the whole health foundation model with that solid bottom plate. So let's continue. Three scoops and we'll start by putting two claws full of pulp into the press. Centered, left to right, centered front to back, all the way back, back it off a little bit. Turn the machine on and we'll continue folding cloths. Here's my six cloth less work method. This goes forward, this goes over. You need not wait for this to be pressed out fully because we're going to fill that again. And I want to remind you, you never throw away your spent pulp. So centered left to right, centered front to back, all the way back, back it off a little bit. Now, you never throw away your pulp. And I'm going to show you later how we can get at least 10% more juice out of this spent pulp. So put two scoops, not three, on top of the pulp. And as before, as tight a package as you can make, the tighter the better. And that's it all the way when you're on your last cloth. And again, two scoops, not three. Six cloth less work method. This goes forward, that goes over. The spent cloths go on top. Now, I notice we have a lot of puddling in my bowl, so what we're going to do now, first center this left to right, center front to back, all the way back, back it off a little bit. Hold this very, very tightly and slowly pour this into the collection bowl. And I say slowly because the first time I did that, I got it all over my counter. So keep your eye on the bowl and let's continue with two ladles full into each cloth. Now I'm going to film this from the back side so the camera gets a good view. And you leave about 10% to add filtered or distilled or bottled water. For me I find the juice much too concentrated especially for a diabetic. So later we're going to add about 10% water. So let's make more juice. Now we'll pull the tray forward, make sure it's on the press plate properly. All right, let's make more juice. So keep your eye on the bowl and let's continue with two ladles full into each cloth. And advance that all the way. Now as you can see I have three double packets of already pressed pulp and this is the pulp that was left over and I've repackaged it. I'm going to use a measuring beaker to measure how much more juice we can get from this. So let's flatten this out, put it in the press. Very important now to center this left to right centered front to back, all the way back, back it off a little bit. 
And so far we have eight ounces. And advance it all the way as soon as you have traction. Well, 12 ounces so far. Now I'm repackaging this pulp a second time and I want to show you my repackaging technique. It's damp around the edges so what I'm going to do is fold this into itself so that the, the dampness is in the center not on the edges. So we'll fold that in so the dampness is all in the center. Repackage again just as before folding it under as many times as you can. There's three folds. And we'll do that again. And then let's see how much more juice we get by repackaging it a second time. Go into the juice tray right in the center, left to right center, front to back center. Make any adjustments if need be. All the way back, back it off a little. Now well, here so far we have 12 ounces. As soon as we get juice flow. Well we've already got 15 ounces and still two more cloths to press. And there you see I've dropped it, so I'm going to stop it here. It looks like 17 ounces. Pour that into the collection bowl. And we'll put our last two cloths in here. Now there we have another 10 ounces of juice. So 27 more ounces. Now here's another tip for you. With cold water, scrub off the pulp, but before you fold it, take the juice tray and go around the edges to remove any built up juice there. And I assure you almost no one does that. And if you do that every time, your juice tray is not going to have a build up of calcium and it won't be difficult to clean. So we'll fold the cloths in thirds just as we have them in the package. And then we're going to press the water out, put them in the freezer in a plastic bag. Now I've already folded these, so let's press the water out and put them in the freezer. Now you could use a sponge to collect it or just let it drip into the, any kind of a bowl. So I'll take my cloths put them back in a plastic bag and into the freezer they'll go. One last tip, remember to clean this upper plate all the way around the edges on the top as well as the bottom of the upper plate and the left side. Almost everyone forgets to do that. Now I'm filling all of my bottles so that they're just slightly overflowing and that way there's no air in the bottle when there's no air in the bottle, your juice will last at least five days, sometimes up to as much as 10 or 12 days. Well, as you can see, my friends, we have 5, 10, 12 bottles of juice. And remember that these two bottles came from pressing the pulp again when it was repackaged. Had we not repackaged the pulp, we wouldn't have these extra two bottles of juice. And there's more nutrients in the last pressing and most people throw that pulp away. So let's do a taste test. Well my friends, here we have another juice, mostly colored greens. And because of that I expect the juice to be a little bit on the bitter side, but it still should be very palatable with the carrots. Let's give it a taste. Oh, it's very, very sweet. Not as uh, bitter as I thought. Usually greens are very bitter, especially dandelion greens. Well, my friends, I hope you like what you've seen in this video, and if you do, please tell a friend. If you'd like to phone me to either buy parts or buy a juicer, my phone number is 760-753-0321. My email address is developtrust at cox.net, and my webpage is wholehealthfound.com. I'll see you in the next video.